but you see a giant deviation. And that's the Great Depression of the 1930s. Uh, there's also the World War II boom right afterwards, but we're not supposed to be imagining that that's a period of uh, uh, great welfare increase. There perhaps was afterwards. That's actually, there's a lot of rationing and suppression of consumption during that period, but just everybody was working. The men went away in the Army and the Navy, and they just took all the women and even teenage children. You know, you get a 15-year-old girl who, after school, um, would, uh, would go and work in a torpedo factory on some island in a little city on an island. So if it blew up, only she and her coworkers would die. And the girls were good because they get their hands in the machine. That was my mom. Um, so this, you can get a lot of output, but I'm not, I'm not going to claim that was a, uh, that was a, that was a period of, uh, of a great increase in welfare. But we certainly see that is the only giant deviation. Now, here is the same picture for Spain. I'm not going to claim to be as big an expert on Spain. Well, I actually probably know more about the Spanish economy than I do about the US economy. That's just the, the sorts of papers I've written. Um, we actually see in the early 1930s what would be called the Great Depression in, in Spain, but it was, it was very mild. Certainly was a time of lots of political upheaval, uh, and the, the economic problems had consequences through the politics, but it's nothing like that in the United States or, let's say, Germany. What follows, though, is the, uh, is the Spanish Civil War, which is pretty horrible, and then a long period going up until the mid-50s when, um, when the dictator decided to stop trying to run the economy like, uh, like the army. Since then, I tried to put this trend line in through, having it passed exactly through 1929 as I did the other case, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be anything like a trend. I do want you to see in both pictures, the current economic downturn is bad. And I'm going to show you close-up pictures and even pictures using quarterly data on these. But I don't want you to think that we're seeing anything like the Great Depression, and we're not. Indeed, this economic downturn in the United States is very comparable to the one that occurred in 1981-83. People in the press would have you believe otherwise when they say, oh, this is by far the biggest economic downturn since the Great Depression. That's just not true. I'll just show you G GDP numbers and especially unemployment numbers. We've never got to the level of unemployment we were at in the 1980s. OK, so what's our definition of a Great Depression? I, I've written this down with uh, some equations, but it's very easy to explain. What I'm trying to do is look at deviations from that trend line. So we have where I think the economy can grow. Why 2%? I do not know. And I, I think that would be very much worth figuring out. When I read uh, my friend Greg Clark from uh, University of California Davis's book on a farewell to alms, uh, what really strikes you about economic history is just how easy it is to describe. Up until 1800, there's no per capita growth in GDP. It's not that, it's not that there were not technological advances. They were. But every time that there were technological advances, population expanded so that the vast majority of people in the world were on the edge of starvation. And Greg especially is an expert at looking at uh, living standards of people in the mid-19th century in England. And he has evidence they had worse health and so forth than did cavemen. I mean, we weren't getting economic growth in terms of per capita GDP until after the Industrial Revolution. Then during the 19th century, growth was slow, but it occurred for the first time in world history. During the 20th century, it occurred at 2% per year. Why 2%? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be 2.5% in the 21st. We're not starting out well, but you know, we, could, we, we, we could move back up. Um, but what, I, what I'm looking for is situations where I get a downward deviation. This is the first condition. A downward deviation of 20%. In 
The United States, and now we're growing again, the United States, the worst it has been during the current crisis is 8%. So we're way short of that. In Spain, where we're not quite growing yet, it's about 9%. So we're still well short of this. I also want it to occur very fast. Uh, so I want 15% at least in the first decade. And then I don't want to add up different episodes. I want it all to be one conti contiguous episode. So that's our definition. And we find some countries satisfy it, some countries don't. The Finns call what they went through when they lost 18.5% of GDP in two years in the early 19th century, and they say that's far worse than anything that happened in their country in the 1930s. They say that was their Great Depression. We don't quite call it a Great Depression, but we wrote a paper on it anyway. And Juan Carlos was one of the co-authors. So here's, just to give you an idea, when I take away the 2% trends, what was happening in the 1930s in, uh, in uh, major European and North American countries. And we see this kind of drop that occurs fairly quickly. And 20%, whoa, that's just a criterion. For some countries like Canada, uh, it's actually 40%. Then, recoveries occur rapidly in some countries. I'm not sure we'd want to follow the German example. That was Adolf Hitler. Uh, and much more slowly in others. France, which didn't have the sharp drop, just still was in the Depression uh, as at the outset of uh, World War II. Here, here are pictures like that for uh, countries in Latin America in the 1980s. Some countries we see, Chile, for example, and I'll come back to the examples of Chile and Mexico. Chile had a much sharper drop at the beginning, but then made a quick comeback. Other countries like Mexico and even worse, Argentina, just kind of slowly slid down, downhill. Argentina uh, was lucky enough to have two chapters in our book because they had a second depression, as you know. After a period of growth in the 1990s, they, they had a depression in 1998 to uh, 2003 4. So let me just start out by talking about the U.S. Great Depression a bit, um, just to give you an idea of what we did. I am not an expert on the U.S. Great Depression. Instead, I'm going to focus a little bit more on a very particular comparison between Mexico and Chile, two countries I know more about. And then I'm going to try to think of what lessons we learned from that that we should be applying to countries like Spain today. But let me just give you uh, an outline of how this works by presenting the sorts of things that uh, Harold Cole and Leo Hanian do. First thing we do is just some growth accounting. This is just a very standard kind of thing. We try to look at the deviations in output that are produced by productivity, by capital inputs, and by labor inputs. And then any story we tell, or better yet, any dynamic general equilibrium model we have, we're going to call that a successful um, explanation or a successful story, or at least a potentially a uh, successful story. Maybe we still need to use micro da uh, data to collaborate it if it can generate the same sorts of pictures. Now, if I had all this, if I had all this, I'd be waiting for those guys from uh, Stockholm to call me up and ask me to come to their party. So I don't have this. I don't have this. And, I, and I'll make very clear uh, what I don't have but I think that this is useful as a research agenda in laying out what we need to do. So this is, this is going to be the goal. 